everybody. Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us this morning. So glad that you are here. Uh, be sure to sign in on the, on the Burgundy welcome pad so that they know that there were people here on Christmas morning. Congratulations. Uh, and welcome to those of you worshiping with us online. We're hoping that you are having a cozy Christmas as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's see, a couple of announcements. We'll do this same thing again next Sunday. Next Sunday is New Year's Day, and we will have the one service at 10 a.m. Uh, don't forget you can come early for coffee and donuts uh, at 9, starting at 9. So join us for that as well. And uh, check your bulletin for lots of other fun stuff coming up. Our, um, our educational programs will resume on January 8th. Uh, the seniors are taking a trip together with the Mothers of Preschoolers Ministry to Oregon Stock Pizza on January 13th. Check that out. That's always a good time. And um, we're celebrating 20 years of Stephen Ministry on January 8th. So lots of fun celebrations still coming up in January. So we'll look forward to seeing you again in the new year. Um, but in the meantime, let's join in some Christmas worship. I invite you to join me in the Christmas proclamation found in your bulletin following the chimes. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. He is the one through whom God created the universe. The one whom God has chosen to possess all things in the end. He is the reflection of God's glory. And the exact appearance of God's very being. And he sustains all things with his powerful word. Amen. Please stand and join me in singing Angels from the Realms of Glory. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. 
all-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Titus. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Word of God, word of life. Second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The lectionary that, that provides our schedule of readings in the three year cycles, the three year cycle, uh, gives us Paul's letter to Titus only at Christmas time. It's the only time we see it. And so most of the time we don't get to hear much about it at all because. Uh, of course, at Christmas time, we focus on the nativity story, uh, the story of Jesus' birth, 
Uh, but I thought since we had this kind of bonus time together today, we'd look at this letter uh, to Titus together. Because I will tell you, the spirit of Christmas was distinctively lacking on the island of Crete the year that the letter to Titus was written. Of course, we have no, time, no way of knowing what actual time of year the letter was written or when exactly it arrived. Uh, sometime in the 60s, perhaps. Like, not the 1960s, but the, the, the 60s. My kids think the 90s are the olden days, so I just thought I'd clarify. Uh, but whatever season it happened to be, it seemed that the Cretans were in need of a little Christmas right that very minute. Or more precisely, an epiphany. They were a youngish congregation of mostly non-Jewish converts to the faith, and they were discovering, along with Titus, their leader, that togetherness can be messy. Even togetherness centered on Christ and his saving work. And the verses that follow our passage from today that Chris read for us, they, it gives us an idea of the kind of thing that was going on as the author urges the congregation to, quote, avoid stupid controversies, <laughs> genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. Apparently, a series of holier-than-thou contests had left everyone the poorer and threatened to damage their credibility with their already skeptical neighbors. Many of us are too well aware of how controversies and quarrels can create rifts in our relationships and how our togetherness can fall short of our needs and expectations, right? Even during a holy season. People can disappoint us. And so can circumstances beyond our control that wrinkle up our plans, things that may be no one's fault but add to our frustration and the sense of pressure. And we may feel, as I imagine Titus did in this congregation, that no matter how much work we put into holding it all together, sometimes it won't be enough. Toes will get stepped on. Feelings will get hurt. Someone will feel left out or underappreciated. And when the need to prove oneself right trumps all other values, such as gentleness and courtesy, there's little room left for relationships to grow. And so Paul offers some solace and some hope, first in expressing solidarity. Turns out the leaders are not off the hook in this scenario. Paul writes, for we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. That sounds pretty extreme until you think about it as just an average day on Twitter. <laughs> but, he continues, but when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, that's the epiphany, Greek word epiphany, when, Christ our Sa when God our Savior appeared, he saved us. I love the simple past tense of that verb. He saved us. Done. The saving work is done, and it was, do it was a done deal the moment he appeared among us, my friends. This is why Christmas matters, why it's more than just a pretty story. His birth is our rebirth. Christmas gives us all a fresh beginning. For as our Savior graciously takes on humanity, humanity takes on divinity. Grace upon grace. And not, the text says, because of any work that we had done. That's so important for us to remember. Not because we were especially wise or had good breeding or were politically astute. Not because we were Bible experts or because we had given money away or because we helped little old ladies across the street or because we were the little old ladies that kept the church running. And not because we were the first ones here or the last to leave, and not even because we got up and came to church on Christmas morning. I'm sorry to tell you. It's not because of any work we had done. Simply because God came and sent a Savior with that purpose in mind. And perhaps, 
Perhaps if people could remember that that's how we ended up here, we could be a little bit more gentle with the shortcomings of others. Paul describes all this using, in these verses from Titus, uh, what may have been a fragment from an early baptismal liturgy. As he talks about the water of rebirth and renewal uh, being the means through which the Holy Spirit is poured out upon us. People barely talk about the Holy Spirit at Christmas, except uh, in the story of Jesus' conception, right? But I've realized that when most people talk about the Christmas spirit, they're really talking about something very similar, even though it's been secularized to a degree. People talk about a spirit, a holiday spirit, that, that enables people to recognize and, and transcend their, their tendencies towards cynicism and self-centeredness, right? That helps them open their eyes to the less fortunate and respond with generous compassion. You see this even in the Hallmark movies, right? The Christmas spirit is a spirit that evokes joy and gratitude and even wonder and awe. And it inspires people to connect with and serve and share love with one another in thoughtful, intentional ways through giving and hospitality. Well, guess what? That's not a bad job description for the third person of the Trinity, also known as the Holy Spirit. So the next time you hear someone say uh, or talk about wishing the Christmas spirit would hang around the whole year through, you can think, remember your baptism. The spirit poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, the text says. Heirs, inheritors, having been redeemed from the captivity of our old self-seeking and self-destructing patterns, we have been granted the status of pride and joy in God's own family. Inheritors of everything that belongs to God, including the power of the Holy Spirit, which is what makes right relationships possible with God, with one another, with creation, Again, it is grace that made a place for us within God's family, not our own deserving. And that grace is what activates our good works. We can love each other better as we value ourselves more, and we can enjoy a fresh start whenever we recall that the birth of Christ signals our rebirth, which was sealed for us in our baptism. And what's more, we can look to a future of hope. There's a beautiful paradox in this text. There's, there's the fact that the saving work has been accomplished by Christ in the past, that past tense word saved. But there's also the assurance that we have been made heirs, quote, according to the hope of eternal life. So we live in hopeful expectation of the fulfillment of God's desires for us, and God's work within us, along with all humanity and all creation in the fullness of time. God's not done with us yet, and not done with those we love, and not done with those we tolerate, maybe barely. We are still becoming what we are meant to be. And that's the way Christmas keeps on giving, my friends. So today, let's celebrate the knowledge that we are loved, redeemed, justified before God because of the goodness of Christ. In spite of all we have or haven't said, done, prepared, or purchased. And let's today make space for grace in our relationships, too. One holier than thou is born. And his reign puts an end to all arguments about who's the most right. Let this day of celebration of the birth of Christ be our rebirth day celebration too. As we open ourselves anew to the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out like a holiday libation. Let today be a celebration of grace upon grace. For Christ our Savior has appeared at last. Merry Christmas.
We'll join in hymn 295, As the Fathers Love the God. Let's stand and sing.
people of God, what do you believe? We believe in the one God, the Father, the Almighty, and the Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God. Please be seated. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. The church in every land makes a joyful noise to herald your coming, O oh God. We give thanks for poets, musicians, and hymn writers who gave voice to our praise and for all who lead the church's worship. Send forth your light. And let your mercy shine upon us. This day dawns with new hope for all living things. And from ocean depths to mountain peaks, the earth rejoices. Inspire in us an urgent zeal to protect the planet and renew its resources. Send forth your light. And let your mercy shine upon us. Bring heavenly peace to this world and an end to armed conflict. Raise up leaders in every nation who will honor human rights and establish equal justice for all people. Give courage to all who speak out against oppression and advocate for the powerless. Send forth your light. And let your mercy shine upon us. Guard the lives of any in danger, especially those who work to protect others. Lead any who are in desperate circumstances to sanctuary, help, and safety. Grant rest to the weary and soothe those who are troubled. We pray in particular for Shirley Beltouch, George Humphrey, Murdy Fink, Marvin Shiver, David Halverson, Eve Stahl. Send forth your light. And let your mercy shine upon us. Bless all who gather to worship on this holy day. Be present at our tables and celebrations and watch over those who travel. Sustain charities, outreach ministries, and food pantries that give generously to people in need. Send forth your light. And let your mercy shine upon us. We pray your peace and comfort for those who are missing loved ones this Christmas including our own health of finger and family, upon the death of her nephew, Ken Schultz, Bill and Carol Lewis, upon the death of Bill's brother, Don, Sharon Lenhart and family, upon the death of her brother, Jim, and Jeff and family, upon the passing of his father-in-law, Rob Nichols. Send forth your light. 
We have beheld your glory, full of grace and truth. We give thanks for those in every generation who reflect the light of Christ. May their witness shine forth in our time. Send forth your light. And let your mercy shine upon us. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace and a Merry Christmas. grateful response to the best gift of all, let us share our gifts and offerings as an act of worship. Join in hymn 290, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Please rise.
abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace poured out in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to the love of the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. to again extend a special welcome to those of you who may be visiting with us this morning and let you know that here at All Saints we believe this is the Lord's table and he invites all who trust in him to share this feast that he has prepared regardless of your the tradition you come from or your denominational background you are welcome at this table we will commune uh, here in the front of the sanctuary uh, we'll have, a, have someone holding the bread in the center and then two people uh, with trays of uh, wine or grape juice. And uh, so you can come down the center aisle and then part, part in either direction um, to receive the elements. Uh, if you would prefer, we do have pre-sealed communion packets at each uh, entrance as well, if you would prefer the, the individually sealed uh, communion elements. Uh, after you have received the elements, if you would like to spend some time praying at the altar rail, that space is open for you. You may pray on your own or with loved ones. And if you would like uh, the pastor to pray with you, I'd be happy to do so. Just give me a nod or a wave and I will join you in prayer 
this morning. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We will join in hymn 276, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly.
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God bless you and keep you. Jesus grant you grace and truth, and the Spirit send peace upon your hearts, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good news. <laughs>